about self-love. It doesn't mean I love every convoluted, indoctrinated, unconscious aspect of my personality. Self-love is love of the capital S self, meaning the truth of who I am, soul, spirit, consciousness, divinity. There are absolutely aspects of ourselves that we'd like to change, I hope. And I say that because most of us, I assume all of us, have patterns. Now, the longer we work with them, the lower they get, the smaller they get. But nonetheless, we have patterns. Whether it's a difficulty getting up early in the morning to meditate, you know, sort of an inclination to hit the snooze button. Whether it's our anger, whether it's our lust, whether it's inability to let go of alcohol or drugs or whatever it may be, a lot of us have different aspects of our lives, of our personalities that we'd like to be different. Self-love doesn't mean that I accept wholeheartedly every aspect of my subconscious, indoctrinated way of being. It means I love and I accept the fullness of who I am. Because who I am is divine. The core of who you are is divine and perfect and pure. And I don't even know you in terms of your, your habits and your personality. So I don't even know what those things might be, but even without knowing them, I can tell you it doesn't matter. Because the core of who you are is divine. Now, on top of that divinity, we put ignorance. And in that ignorance, and in that patterning, when we're young, we get indoctrinated. We get indoctrinated by our families who are doing the very best they can, who mean well, but who themselves are in various types of ignorance. We get indoctrinated by our culture, by our society. We get indoctrinated by our educational system that's much, much more interested in us learning how to sit down and shut up than actually in discovering who we are. We get indoctrinated into systems that tell us what's good, what's bad. Your pencils are back in the box. You are good. Pencils are not back in the box. Desk is messy. You're bad. So we get into all these systems. And from that, we develop habits and personality traits and all sorts of aspects of who we are. Talk about vasanas. These are things that we work. We work to overcome. Because they're keeping us from knowing the truth of who we are. So it's not that I don't love myself. It's actually that I love myself so much. I'm prepared to go head to head with my anger, with my lust, with my greed, with my patterning. Because those things are keeping me from living in a constant awareness of self-love. Those things make me live in darkness. Those things make me identify with a small self. Those things tell me you are not enough. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not popular enough. You're not rich enough. You haven't accomplished enough. You're not pure enough. And if I really love myself, then I need the voices in my own head to stop saying those things, because that's violence. 
when we pledge ourselves to nonviolence, to ahimsa, well, it means we really better figure out how to do something about the voices in our own heads that are violent to us. So self-love does not mean, oh yeah, I'm going to let every patterned commentator in my head keep shouting at me that I'm worthless, undeserving, stupid. No, it means I'm actually going to do whatever I can do to get those voices to stop. Not because they're bad, but because they are ignorant. Because on the side of light and dark, they are dark. Not dark as evil, impure, not that. Just darkness of ignorance. We speak a lot in Indian culture and the Vedic tradition about, about darkness. Ignorance, you can't see. And when we pray, lead us from darkness to light. It's not take us from impurity to purity. It's take us from ignorance to truth. Take us from being blinded, not being able to see the truth of who we are, to being able to see it. That's self-love. When you really love yourself, well, then you know that you deserve to occupy your place here on planet Earth, regardless of whether you got up to meditate today or you hit the snooze button, regardless of whether you've earned a dollar today or in the last year, regardless of whether you've accomplished anything ever, regardless of what you look like, regardless of any possible measure that you may use, to judge yourself. You are divine and you are here for a reason. And self-love says the only way I'm going to find that reason, live that reason, know my truth, is if I can get these voices in my head to stop. And so this is where we work with those parts of us, whether they're behaviors or just voices, Typically, they go together. The voices lead to behaviors that keep us from light. So root your self-love in the fullness of yourself and allow out of that self-love your ability to remove that which is harming you. I mean, think for a moment. If I, if I were a doctor... And you came to me with a tumor. And I said to you, you need to remove that tumor because it's going to kill you. And you said to me, well, what about self-love? I mean, right, I'm supposed to love myself. And here I am, I'm going to let you cut me up with a knife? That's not self-love. Well, sure it is. Because the tumor is going to kill you. And self-love doesn't mean... I just sit here and allow this tumor to kill me. It means I do whatever I can do. And this is on the purely physical level, of course, but it, sometimes it's easier to understand analogies on a very physical level. You love yourself enough to get the tumor removed so you can live. In the same way, you love yourself enough to allow the ignorance to be removed so that you can live in light, in the truth of who you are, in that, that capital S self.